Welcome to the next in the series of the Photoshop CS5 for architecture students. Now in this video we're going to copy in the remainder of our uh, source drawings into the presentation and set them out um, on the sheet. So as you can see we've already got the section in there. We're going to copy in the ground level plan so we'll go control A select all control C to copy tab back to my presentation sheet to paste control V. Now in all of these instances the Mac um, uh, command uh, key will replace the control key. Go back to level 1 plan, control A, select all, control C, copy. Back to our sheet, control V to paste. So I can play around and place these drawings on the sheet in by eye in a reasonably accurate way. Now one thing I'm going to do before going much further is I'm going to just check the preferences and the particularly the way that the ruler is displayed because I notice here that it's being displayed in centimeters and also looking at the way that the objects are moving along the grid seems to be quite a, a large spacing between the grid spacings. So if we go into the application uh, menu along the top, the edit pull down, go down to preferences and in the fly out just select general. What we're interested in are these two preferences here, the units and rulers and the guides and grid lines. Let's go to the units and rulers first. I'm going to change my ruler units to millimeters it's just by force of habit that um, architects usually work in millimetres and doing the presentation it just comes as second nature. Now with the guides and grid we can see that the grid is every two centimetres so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to a grid line every one centimetre or let's say let's keep things into millimetres every ten millimetres and I'm going to put a subdivision uh, five subdivisions, so that means I'll have a grid line at every two millimeters, which should be more than enough for this presentation. Okay, I'm happy with that. Press OK. Now, to help me sort of align, I'm going to start with these two the section and the ground level plan. Now, we can pull out um, guidelines. Now, these are non printing lines to help us line things up. Now, a quick way of doing it perhaps not an accurate way, I'm going to pull a horizontal guideline and then go up to the ruler at the top, the horizontal ruler, hold my left mouse button down and then pull down a line. And When I've got it positioned approximately where I want it, I let go of the mouse button and it places that guideline there. Now I can by eye with the combination of the mouse and nudging it with the arrow keys I can get this part of the pop-out lining up approximately with that pop-out in the section. Now if I wanted to be a little bit more accurate with the placement of my guidelines, you can see here it's not really set to anything in particular, I can go up to the view um, application pull down menu and we can see here we can place a new guide. Now in this instance I want to place my guide at the 140 millimeter mark. Now with this placement method I can actually type in a value of a vertical guide 140 millimeters, go OK and it gives me the guideline exactly where I want it. Now I can move the back edge of this using the move and nudging it with the arrow keys so that it aligns with that. Select my layer 3 and again I can nudge this across with my arrow keys. So I'm reasonably happy with that layout. Okay, it's a bit conventional, but for a start it'll serve us well. It's probably a good idea to save the file regularly. So again in the pull down menu um, under the file application save and you can see the shortcut there is control S or in a Mac it'll be command S. 
So I'm just going to save the file just in case once we start to get more elements in here and it starts to make our computer work a little bit harder. I don't want to lose too much information in case the program crashes on me. Now also um, I think it's good policy to do regular prints um, along the, the way as you're pulling together your composition. Now I like doing a print early on to just check to see that the scans have come up okay and to get a feel for how the composition is coming along in a hard copy. Now to do the print it's very simple again under the file application pull down menu and we scroll down right down here to print again shortcut control P or on the Macintosh command P. Going to select that. Now your print window will probably look um, different to this unless you have the HP desk jet um, set up. I'm just going to make sure that my settings are correct because I can see in the preview window we're not quite getting the printout that we want and here it is I suspected the paper size isn't correctly selected so I'm going to select an A3 size and here make sure that I've got it in the landscape mode go OK and you can see there that's what's going to be sent to print and it'll be scaled at 100% so when I do the actual test print itself I can check all of the drawings for scale to make sure that I haven't made any silly mistakes in the scanning or placing process. So stick around in the next video we're going to go through the use of layers and some tricks and how we start to manipulate our image and composition through the layer panel. So we'll see you then.